Hey, my friends, welcome to Automatic CSS 101, also known as ACSS 101. My name is Kevin Geary. I'm the founder of Automatic CSS, and I'm producing this free course for you as part of my ongoing commitment to education, not just education of our products, but education designed to elevate the web design community in general. So let's talk about what this course is going to cover. First and foremost, and should be obvious, it's going to cover the features of automatic CSS. And so I know tool tips and documentation are available and we work very hard to make those things as clear as possible, but it's super important to see the actual features in action and have them explained in real time so that you can understand them better. I want you to be as confident as possible knowing what every single feature in the framework does and how it works. The second thing that this course is going to cover are the fundamentals of using automatic CSS in a real project. Because there are many features and because there are many ways to use automatic CSS, we have to talk about the recommended workflow. The workflows that we've learned from personal experience create more efficiency, more scalability, and more maintainability in your projects. So essentially there is a great way to use automatic CSS. And then of course you could use it in inefficient ways. So it is important for you to learn the proposed automatic CSS workflow. The third thing that we're gonna cover in this course is the philosophy behind some of Automatic CSS's opinions and how these opinions and philosophies align with modern web design standards. So when we talk about best practices and the most efficient way to do something or the most scalable and maintainable way to do something, I am going to highlight how Automatic CSS is in alignment with those principles and why those principles are very important and how you can carry those principles and philosophies into your projects. Now, being that this is lesson one, here's where we're gonna start. We're gonna start with the stuff that Automatic CSS does out of the box, without a single second of setup time, without a single ounce of effort, there are essentially 10 key things that Automatic CSS is already doing for you the moment you install it and activate it. And in order to help us understand what this is doing by default, we're gonna compare a vanilla Automatic CSS installation, that's an ACSS installation that's just activated and hasn't been touched yet, with a vanilla page builder installation. The page builder we're gonna be using in this video is Bricks Builder. But you're gonna compare how does a typical page builder look when you first start a project versus how does a page builder powered by automatic CSS look and behave when you first start a project. So I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to share my screen. In this tab, you can see my two tabs over here on the left-hand side. In this tab, I am using automatic CSS. Again, no setup, no nothing. It's just installed and it's activated. And I set up bricks. Uh, which is just a file that you upload for the theme files, okay? And we give that to you essentially on a silver platter. And the setup for most builders with automatic CSS is less than 60 seconds. So it's neither here nor there. What I have over in this tab, and you can see when I flip back and forth, I, essentially they're exactly the same, right? So far, so far they're exactly the same. But what I have in this tab is a vanilla bricks installation. Now, if you have any experience whatsoever in web design, you know that when you start a project, there are a lot of decisions that have to be made. There's a lot of setup and prep work that has to be done before you can actually start building. With automatic CSS, the great thing about it, out of the box, upon activation, is that 90% of that decision making is handled for you and 95% or more of that setup process is already done for you. You don't have to worry about it. You don't need the headaches. You don't have to go through the decision fatigue at the beginning of every single project. And a lot of that is what we're gonna take a look at here. I'm gonna start just by adding a section element to this page, okay? I'm gonna do this in Automatic CSS 101. So I'm gonna click the little plus sign here and I'm gonna add a section. I'm gonna go over to Vanilla Bricks and I'm gonna do the exact same 
thing. And I want you to take a look at the difference. This is our section element in a vanilla Bricks install. And this is our section element in an automatic CSS install. And right away, you can see a fundamental difference. In automatic CSS, what's obvious is that this section has section padding. It has block padding, top and bottom padding. And this is automatically responsive padding, and it's all based on a mathematical scale. So these are decisions right off the bat that you just do not have to make. Now, can you adjust this padding? Absolutely. You can, everything that we're going to discuss that happens automatically, you have 100% control over. But the point is, you don't have to do any thinking right now. You don't have to do any setup or decision making. If we flip over to the vanilla bricks installation, what you're going to see is that there is no block padding. And there is no gutter either. So I'm gonna just throw in a heading here, okay? And I'm gonna throw in a heading in the automatic CSS installation as well. And we're just gonna take a look. Obviously our content in the vanilla install is touching the, the top of the screen in the automatic CSS install, it's not. But I wanna take a look at the gutter situation, okay? So if I go down uh, on a breakpoint in the automatic CSS install, you're gonna see that my website has a gutter. You're also gonna see that that is a responsive gutter, which means it gets smaller as the screen size gets smaller. This happens automatically. I don't have to do hardly any breakpoint management when I'm using automatic CSS. Now, if we flip over to the vanilla install, not only do we not have any section padding by default, we don't even have a website gutter by default. So on all uh, smaller devices, your content is gonna be touching the edge of the screen. Now, what is required? This is such a simple thing. It's a section element. It's a basic thing. It's a thing you're gonna use over and over and over hundreds of times on a typical project yet you're faced with a, a bunch of decisions that have to be made right now just with this one single element. So in terms of that block padding, what are the values going to be for that block padding? What are you gonna set them to? If this is a vanilla install, you don't have a framework, you don't have automatic CSS. In fact, you don't, yeah, you don't have automatic CSS because not even all frameworks do this for you by default. So what are you, what values are you going to use here? Are you going to use pixel values? Are you gonna use rim values? What are those values going to be based on? Wait, don't you want it to be automatically responsive? So I guess that means you have to use clamp functions of some kind. Now you have to figure out what's my min gonna be? What's my max gonna be? What is my middle value gonna be? Maybe you could pull up a clamp calculator, but still, where are these values gonna come from? And now you have to think through to the next step, which is, but I, I'm probably gonna need a small section and a large section, maybe an extra large section, an extra small section at some point. What are those values gonna be? And how are those values gonna relate to each other? Am I gonna use some sort of a math scale here? Or am I just gonna choose random values for all of these things? How is this gonna work? And then, by the way, if I do use clamp functions, uh, shouldn't I tokenize them? I don't think I want uh, just you know raw clamp functions floating all over my project. I probably am gonna need to tokenize those. Where am I going to tokenize them? What am I going to name the to guys? Let's pause for a second. Do you, do, you, do you see what I'm saying in terms of setup and decision-making and the decision fatigue that is present at the beginning of so many projects because of all this stuff that has to be figured out? And automatic CSS just hands you this stuff on a silver platter and says, look, all of this stuff has already been sorted out for you. It's already been thought through. It's already been set up. It's already ready to go out of the box. And then you ask, but wait, do I still have full control over it? And the answer is yes. But as you can see, just with a simple section element, so much is already done for you. Now, since we're talking about padding and we're talking about gutter, which are both forms of spacing, let's just stay on the spacing topic for right now. I'm gonna go over to Vanilla Bricks and I am going to duplicate. Actually, you know what we're gonna do? We're going to add some real content in, okay? So we're gonna add a paragraph and we are going to add a button. All right, I wanna put that paragraph above the button and I wanna make sure that it's an actual paragraph tag. We will make this an H1 and the button is of course the button, but we need to give it a URL. Okay, I'm gonna go over to the ACSS 101 installation. I'm going to add the same exact elements. I'm gonna add text and I'm gonna add a button. We will make sure that this is actually a paragraph. We will make sure that the button actually has a pound sign here, okay? And we're gonna talk about the buttons more later. I want you to kind of ignore the button right now. We're just talking about spacing. 
I'm gonna flip back and forth between the Vanilla Bricks installation and the Automatic CSS 101 installation, okay? This is Vanilla Bricks. You can see all of the content is touching and in Automatic CSS 101, the content is actually spaced out. All spacing in Automatic CSS is automatically responsive. All spacing in Automatic CSS follows a math scale. So from size to size to size, they are perfectly ratioed out. Again, these are decisions that you would have to make for all spacing across your website. You would have to find ways to tokenize those. You would have to find ways to generate the clamp functions and the math scales and all of that. With automatic CSS, it is already done for you. And if you notice that spacing is automatically being applied for me in specific contexts. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna duplicate the container and this is gonna demonstrate some of the different contexts that we have for spacing. So in Automatic CSS 101, I will do the exact same thing. And now you can start to see major differences, major differences, right? Not only is there not spacing between the content in my containers, there is no spacing between the containers in a vanilla page builder install. And this isn't just bricks. This is the same with every page builder you are going to use for the most part. Okay, now, if we look at the Automatic CSS installation, we can see that we have a big gap between our containers and then everything within our containers is automatically spaced out. Now, this isn't just spaced out with random spacing values or random spacing tokens. We actually use a concept called contextual spacing in automatic CSS. We are gonna spend much more time on this in a future lesson. But what you need to know for right now is that we apply what is called content gap between pieces of content like in a container, okay, like a heading and text and a button. And then between containers, we actually apply something called container gap. These are two different contexts of spacing. In grids, we apply something called grid gap. And what this allows you to do, by the way, no other framework really has this. We've been on the forefront of leading the charge of the concept and the philosophy of contextual spacing because it is so powerful. What this allows you to do is to adjust the spacing across your website at any single time safely because you know exactly how you're affecting the spacing. It's not just a bunch of random spacing values used everywhere and then you can globally tighten them up or loosen them up and it changes everywhere. With automatic CSS, I can tighten or loosen my content at any time. I can tighten or loosen the spacing between my containers and sections at any time. I can tighten or, or loosen them all at once. I can control my grids separately from everywhere else. The amount of control, the amount of flexibility that you have with automatic CSS is unprecedented with spacing, with typography, with colors, with, with so much of the system. Um, and so what you need to know here is that these gaps, this spacing is applied automatically. Now. Can you turn off the automatic spacing? Yes, absolutely. Would you want to? No, here's why. Because it's so easy to override. In any situation where I needed to be bigger or smaller or go away, I can make it bigger or smaller or make it go away in that situation. The auto spacing is applied, I don't wanna to get too technical, but it's applied with no specificity whatsoever, which means you can override it with any technique you want, a utility class, ID styling, custom class styling, inline styling, whatever you wanna override it with, you can override it with at any time. You can override it programmatically at any time. You could change the values at any time automatically from the ACSS dashboard. It's very easy. There is no limitations whatsoever. So leave it on and that's why it's on by default. It's already taking care of challenges that you don't need to take care of. You don't have to tell every container to have a gap. You don't have to tell every section to have spacing. You don't have to tell every section to space between the containers. You, this is all just done for you so that you can focus on working, so that you can focus on building a scalable, maintainable site faster. Okay, this is all done to assist you. Whereas with a normal bricks installation, all of this stuff has to be done manually. All of this stuff has to be figured out ahead of time before you get started. 
with automatic CSS, you can literally just start building because these things can be adjusted at any time. Okay, so we've talked about section padding and website gutter. We've talked about responsive scale-based spacing in all regards, padding, section padding, margin, gaps, everything is consistent and automatically responsive. We talked about auto gap and auto spacing. Now let's talk about smart spacing. So what smart spacing does, it really does two things. First of all, it clears out all user agent styling from your website. So the default browser spacing that's put on headings and paragraphs, for example, we get rid of all of that because we don't want the browser determining what your spacing is. We want you to determine what your spacing is. The second thing that smart spacing does is in areas of rich text, which could be a rich text element, which could be Gutenberg content pulled in from a template. Uh, usually blog posts are considered rich text. So in those areas, what smart spacing does is it applies intelligent spacing, looking for adjacent siblings. There's a concept in CSS where we can look for something that has something before it, and then we can apply top spacing to that element. And so what this gives you is granular control over the spacing within your rich text areas. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because in a vanilla bricks install, which is what you're looking at right now, even though the spacing looks okay, you don't have any control over it whatsoever. You cannot, you cannot space this, these images out more than they already are. You cannot control this list spacing. You cannot control this block quote spacing. You cannot control the paragraph spacing. You cannot control the heading level spacing. There are no controls for these things in most page builders, but in automatic CSS, you are given control. So I'm gonna go to the front end. This is the automatic CSS version of the website, which looks very, very similar. I'm gonna click this button right here to open the automatic CSS dashboard. And then I'm gonna go to spacing and I'm gonna go to smart spacing. And you're gonna see that I have granular control over the spacing of all of my headings. When I go to text and lists, I have control over my paragraph spacing, my list spacing, my nested list spacing. I have control over figure elements, which are these images, or it could be videos, or it could be charts and tables. I have something called flow spacing. I have something called block quote spacing. We're gonna go into detail on all of these things, but I just wanna show you out of the box, automatic CSS has normalized all of your spacing by removing the user agent styling. This actually allows you to achieve perfectly even spacing in your page building efforts using gaps, uh, which is much more efficient than the user agent styling and much more consistent than the user agent styling. And then in any rich text areas, not only do you have great spacing, you have full control over all the elements inside of those rich text areas where the page builder has not given you this level of control and where no other framework gives you this level of control. So just to demonstrate, I'm going to put a 5M value of spacing on my H2 level headings. This is a lot of spacing. I'm making it obvious so we can see where it's applying. And notice that it applied it to this heading right here, but not this heading. But they're both level two headings. So why did this one get it and this one didn't? This is why it's called smart spacing. This one has an adjacent sibling. It has a paragraph above it. This has nothing above it. So it knows, well, we don't need spacing there because there's nothing above it, so we shouldn't apply. In fact, if we did apply spacing here, it would look terrible. It would not look good. Why, why would there be so much gap between this and nothing, right? So smart spacing is smart. It applies it only when it is needed. I can go 5M on my H, well, that was 53M. I can go 5M on my level three headings, and now my level three headings are spaced out. Again, would you go huge with these values? No, I'm just making it obvious to show you the level of control. Let's go to paragraphs, 1M, let's try 2M. Now we see bigger uh, spacing, let's try 3M. Let's try 4M. You can see how I'm able to space out my paragraphs. Notice too that it's intelligent spacing, right? There's no spacing where I'm not asking for it. Like at the bottom of this last paragraph, it didn't add 5M of spacing or whatever the value is. What are we at? 4M of spacing to the bottom of this paragraph. It's only adding it but essentially where gaps would be added between content, which is very, very, very nice, okay? I'll set that back to uh, 1M. Let's take a look at these lists for a second. Uh, and I also wanna show you a trick of all of this spacing, okay? So I'm gonna do list block and I'm gonna say 5M and it's gonna add 5M top and bottom above the list, okay? This actually, because it's block spacing, accepts two values. So I can do space 
zero. And now there will be zero at the bottom, 5M on the top. I could flip the values, zero, 5M. Now there's zero at the top, 5M at the bottom. Instead of zero, I can do 2M. So I can do 2M at the top, 5M at the bottom. I could do pixels. I could do whatever I want here. I can use other variables. There, you're not limited in any form or fashion. I can do my indent here. I can do the indent of my nested list item, okay? I have full control over every aspect of this rich text. I'm gonna go to my figure right here, my image, and say, you know what? I wanna space those out a little bit extra, okay? We'll give them 2M of spacing. And again, zero on the bottom, I can do zero. I can do zero on the top. I can do two values, I can do one value. I can do whatever I would like to do. I can do this with block quotes. I can do this with at nearly every instance of rich text. I have granular control, and this is only when using automatic CSS. It is not when using the page builder. It is not when using any other framework. If you were doing this vanilla, or if you were using a different framework that obviously doesn't give you this level of control and doesn't even have this concept deployed, you are faced with writing a bunch of custom CSS. You have to know exactly how to target all of these elements. You have to know how to apply the smart spacing approach with adjacent siblings. You have to know a lot of stuff and you have to do a lot of stuff. But with automatic CSS, it's just there and it's done out of the box with no setup. It is ready to go, ready to solve your problems. And what you're gonna find is that there are so many different common scenarios that create headaches and nightmares for people building websites in the modern era that automatic CSS has just handled for you in this form or fashion so that you can focus on getting your work done and not focus on sorting out all of these technical details. All right, the next thing I wanna talk about is scale-based responsive typography. So for this, what we're gonna do is hop back into the builder. I'm gonna clear out the, uh, the live previews there, and I'm gonna clear out our rich text. I'm gonna do this on the vanilla install as well. And then I'm just gonna throw in some headings. So we're gonna go uh, heading one, two, three, four, five, and six, okay? So I'm gonna make this a heading one, two, this is gonna be a three, this is gonna be four, then we have five and six. Then I'm gonna go to the vanilla bricks install, and I will essentially do the exact same thing, except I hit the wrong thing. Okay, let's let's go add a heading. Well, that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. I'm just duplicating here. All right, so we're gonna do a one up here. We're gonna do a three down here. We're gonna do a four, a five, and a six. Okay, now let's take a look at the differences. We can get rid of website Ipsum now. Here's the automatic CSS version. Nice scale-based hierarchy. Vanilla bricks obviously has a hierarchy. If you measure the values, number one, they're random, they're not automatically responsive, and they don't follow a perfect mathematical scale. That is something that is left up to you to figure out, whereas with automatic CSS 101, it is already done for you. Can I change the scale? Yes. Can I override individual sizes? Yes. I will reiterate what I said in the beginning. Anything you see happening automatically out of the box, you have 100% control over. There is no limitations. The other thing I want you to notice is I didn't have to put any classes on anything. I didn't have to do anything. I haven't done a single thing. I am just ready to go out of the box with responsive scale-based typography, just like I was ready to go out of the box with responsive scale-based section padding and a gutter and spacing and gaps and all of that. All right, while we're on the topic of typography, let's look at one more automatic feature, which is the automatic elimination of orphans. And I know that sounds terrible. I'm not talking about actual orphans. I'm talking about a concept in UI design. So what I've done is I've reduced this page to a single heading. I've done this on the vanilla bricks install as well. And on the vanilla bricks, this is where we'll start. I'll say, this is the vanilla bricks installation it doesn't have a CSS installed. Now, if you don't know what an orphan is, I'm gonna show you exactly what an orphan is right now. I'm gonna change the width of this container. We'll start with like 800. Oh, that's a great guess, okay? 800, produce an orphan. Basically, the container shrunk, so the lines have to break, right? The, the, the text is not gonna overflow the container. And it just happened to break 
to where only one word was put on the second line by itself. That is called an orphan. That is widely known to be undesirable in UI design. We try to avoid orphans at all costs because it looks really bad. It's bad for readability. Like it doesn't look visually balanced. It's not great whatsoever. Now in automatic CSS, I'm gonna try to produce an orphan here. So I'm gonna say this is the ACSS version of Bricks. It probably will never create orphans, okay? And then I am going to shrink my container down here. Let's try 800. Let's go, let's just start increasing the width. Now we have two words. Remember, if we get to one single word by itself, that's an orphan. I'm gonna keep going up with our width to make more space to see if it'll put one word on the next line up here and leave a word by itself and, and create an orphan. So we're going up with the width, up, 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 up. And look, no orphan is allowed. Now, when I shrink it back down, it doesn't take one word and break it. It puts at minimum two words on the next line because orphans are avoided for you automatically out of the box. This just automatically improves the readability of your text, the readability of your headings, the balance, the visual balance of your text and headings. All of this is improved, again, out of the box for you by automatic CSS. The next thing that automatic CSS does for you when you first install it, now we're not gonna, we're not gonna talk about this in detail, but I'm gonna go over to the color palette and just have you recognize that there is an entire thought out, organized, tokenized color system waiting for you to deploy it on your projects. You don't have to think about what am I gonna call all the names of the colors? How am I gonna tokenize all this stuff? How many shades are going to be available for each color? What are the values of those shades gonna be? How am I gonna make it so I can easily customize those shades? How do I make it so that if the main color changes, all of its, all of its shades also update? How do I uh, partialize the colors so that I have full control over them and re-themeability on certain pages of my website versus other pages or certain templates versus uh, other pages of the website? How do I generate transparencies? How do I organize and manage all of this stuff? That is again, a, a huge point of decision fatigue across your projects. And then what happens is people get very inconsistent with this deployment across projects. Whereas automatic CSS, everything is already figured out for you. Everything is right there waiting for you to customize it. It has full support for color scheme. It has auto color scheme, none of this is figured out for you in a typical page builder environment. They give you a very basic color management system. It's not tokenized, or if it is tokenized, it's it's like auto named tokens that you can never remember, you can never reference. Automatic CSS gives you all of this stuff out of the box. All of those decisions gone, all of those headaches gone. It's just ready for you to deploy. Now, I wanna go back to something that we did a little bit earlier, but we forgot to uh, look at in a little bit more detail, and that is buttons and links. You saw me add a button previously, uh, and I'm gonna go do this on the vanilla install as well. And what I want you to see is on the vanilla install, I am tasked with, okay, I've got to figure out the styles for my, like the global styles for my button. How am I going to apply those? Is it going to be with a class? Am I going to write some global CSS somewhere? Am I going to use the, the, the page builders global styles or maybe the page builder has presets? Am I going to use those? What values am I going to use? Am I going to tokenize those values? What is the name of those tokens going to be? Um, are they going to be used across all of my buttons? How am I going to make sure that all of my different button styles are consistent and maintainable and kind of linked together in terms of their global styling, that's a lot to figure out. That's a lot of decisions that have to be made. In automatic CSS, there's no decisions that have to be made. I'm gonna put button primary on here and it is immediately going to style itself according to my primary button styling. Do I have full control over every uh, instance of these buttons, how they look, how they behave? Absolutely. The transitions are already there. The focus states are already there. So I'm gonna go view this on the front end. Uh, let's go ahead and refresh the page. I actually need to put a link in. There's gotta be a link to make this an actual clickable element, okay? So I've got button primary and I've got the pound sign there. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. There's my button. I'm going to focus on it. And you see, I get a light 
focus outline. I can make that a dark focus outline if I want. The point is that I get a focus outline that is branded and styled according to what I've got going on. And I haven't even told this automatic CSS installation how things are supposed to look yet. I can change that primary color at any time. I'm gonna go into the uh, vanilla bricks installation. I'm going to make this a pound sign as well, a real link. And then I'm gonna go to the front end of the vanilla installation. No hover styles. My focus style is a weird, plain, dotted, black outline kind of thing, not on brand, doesn't look all that great. And I'm faced with making all of these decisions about my button styling, different button variations, where was auto with automatic CSS, I have a primary button, a secondary button, a tertiary button, I've got outline buttons, I've got light buttons and dark buttons that are variants of all of those, all of the things that I need are just sitting there waiting for me. Whereas without automatic CSS, these are all just an endless stream of decisions that I have to make. All right, the next thing I wanna look at is image handling. Now, if you have a eye for detail, you probably saw this happening earlier. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and throw an image in here. Uh, let's use this couple again. We'll put them in. Fantastic. I'm going to go to the vanilla bricks installation and we will, let's take the default width off of there and let's throw an image in here as well. Okay. And I'm going to throw in essentially the exact same image so that we have a one-to-one -one comparison. Okay. I'm going to save. I'm going to go to the front end of this website and I'm gonna to go to the front end of the Bricks website. So the ACSS website, you're gonna notice that this image already has rounded corners and on the vanilla Bricks installation, on most page builder installations, it's gonna have no rounded corners, no radius whatsoever. What is happening here? Well, automatic CSS knows that you're gonna have a radius. Like you need a radius system, whether you want the radius to be zero or actually have a value, you need a radius system. The page builder doesn't give you a radius system out of the box. It gives you the ability to add a radius to things if you want a radius on them, but there's no system for radius. There's no system for automatic radius, for example. If I want my images to have a radius, if I want my cards to have a radius, if I want different things to have a radius on a website, typically it's going to be a consistent value. There's one value for the radius and then you use that value everywhere, which also means that value needs to be tokenized. Okay, again, these are things you have to figure out on the vanilla bricks installation. With automatic CSS, you're already given a radius system and you're already automatically given a radius on the things that should have a radius. Uh, and for things like cards where you need to add the radius, you simply add the variable radius and you're done and you move on with your life. And now everything has a consistent radius that is all uh, controllable from a single instance of the dashboard. Now, here's the thing. Let's say you're working on a project that doesn't need a radius. Well, just make it zero. And it, then your project has no radius and none of this is affected at all. What if you do want all of your cards automatically to have a radius? Is that easy to do? Yeah, that's very easy to do with automatic CSS. Automatically, programmatically, without adding the variables to every single card class or instance or anything like that. The point is that there's a radius system. The second point is it automatically applies the radius to various areas that you automatically want it applied to because in a vanilla installation, what you're tasked with is number one, coming up with the radius system, creating the tokens, all of that, and then writing a bunch of custom CSS for programmatic targeting or what most people do using some sort of radius utility class on every single instance of every single element. And then if the radius needs to go away or change, you have to figure out how to override that. And then if you override it, does the name you gave it still make sense? Okay, there's so much, so much, so many decisions. Who wants all of these decisions and headaches? Don't we just want to actually work and get the, get the project done and have all of this figured out for us and collect our checks and move on with our life, you're not being paid to figure out the framework side of building a scalable, maintainable custom website. You're getting paid to actually build the website. Let automatic CSS do all the heavy lifting, all of the thinking, all of the philosophizing, all of the figuring it and outing, okay? <laughs> let ACSS handle all of that stuff for you. You don't need to be worrying about all of that stuff. And as I see in most cases, messing it up, messing it up. Like most, most people's projects are extremely 
messy. They don't have all this stuff figured out. And it's absolute chaos in the back end, which means it's chaos to scale and maintain and then change in the future. Now, there's one final thing I want to show you with regard to these images. It's kind of small, but it's still extremely helpful. And it highlights, again, we're not, these are 10 big things that automatic CSS does for you out of the box. It's not everything that automatic CSS does for you out of the box. I am going to manipulate the aspect ratio of this image. Now, and this is the vanilla bricks installation. I can change the aspect ratio literally, or I could change the width or the height. I will just choose the easiest approach, which is changing the aspect ratio. I'm gonna do one over one, or you can just put one, and that will give you a square aspect ratio. And look what's happening on the vanilla bricks install. It is stretching the image. So now I'm faced with, all right, I've got to fix that situation because nobody wants a stretched image. I have to know that the way to fix this is with object fit cover. If I put object fit cover, it looks good. It crops into it, but it maintains uh, proper proportions. Okay. So one, I have to know that. Two, now I have to decide, is that actually the best way to apply that? I mean, I just applied that at the ID level, which only affects this one image. Am I now going to like create a utility class to do this? Am I going to write custom CSS for programmatic targeting of images somehow? What am I going to do to make this a, a more efficient approach? Because I don't want to have to do this on every single image manually. And I certainly don't want to do it at the ID level manually on every single image. Well, with automatic CSS, this is just yet another thing that you don't have to worry about. So when I go to the automatic CSS install, I'm gonna do the same thing, aspect ratio of one, and it becomes a square, and it just, it doesn't break. It doesn't warp, It does. it's already fixed. It's already fixed by automatic CSS. I don't have to figure it out. I didn't even have to put a class on it. There's just nothing else I have to do. I changed the dimensions to whatever I wanted and I get to move on with my life. There is nothing else to figure out. All right, the 10th thing on the list, which actually we don't even need to look at, is just knowing that out of the box, you have an entire library of variables at your disposal. You have an entire library of utility classes at your disposal. The utility classes can be turned off if you don't want them or need them or use them. And that makes this framework extremely lightweight. We're also gonna talk about the actual workflow. How do we deploy all of these things in the most efficient, scalable, maintainable, maintainable workflow possible. You also have a whole slew, a toolbox of things that are going to help you with the efficiency side of things. Things like contextual menus, things like uh, dropdowns, live preview. There's so much that we have to look at. Var wrapping, calc wrapping, that is going to help you on your journey, save you time, save you money, make your life easier, and make the process of building modern websites actually enjoyable. So join me on this journey. We've got many, many, many lessons to come about features, about workflow, about philosophy. And by the end of this course, you are going to be a master, a pro at Automatic CSS, and you will be building custom, scalable, maintainable websites faster than you could have ever imagined, and by far faster than pretty much everybody else in the industry. That is the promise and the superpower of automatic CSS. I will see you in lesson number two.